Hi, I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. I'm here with Les Richmond, BAM's pension actuary. Les wrote a column in The Bond Buyer this week talking about some of the impacts of the recent stock market declines and the COVID-19 impact on public pension risks nationwide. And he's joining me today to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the observations he made in that column. Les, thank you for making the time. So let's start by talking about the stock market. You know, it has recovered from its lows somewhat. It's a couple of thousand points above its lowest parts, but it's still lower significantly than it was earlier this year. And assuming it doesn't rebound completely, how are those losses going to be incorporated into the pension fund's financial status? Oh, you're right, Mike. Uh, volatility is the name of the game right now. Uh, now, the losses actually do feel worse than they really are because actuaries do their measurements on given dates. So, uh, if, and many of our issuers uh, have fiscal years that end June 30th. So, from June 30th to February, the S&P 500, for example, was up about 15% during that time. And that's, that's why, uh, the, you know, today, well, what time is it? It's, uh, <laughs> it, uh, as of the close of business yesterday, it was only down about 1% from last June 30th, okay? So, that really is not that terrible. Of course, I think it's down another couple of percent today. But anyway, so what happens is um, when actuaries do their measurement, we don't know what it's going to be on uh, June 30th, 20, the first major valuation date uh, that uh, is after the pandemic effect. Um, but let's just say that uh, at that time, uh, Returns on pension funds are down 10 percent. A real, you know, a real performance of down 10 percent uh, from the last measurement date. Let's stop there for a second. That's an important thing to recognize, right? So even if the fund's actual return is flat for the year, that's considered down in pension accounting terms because that's a reduction versus what was expected. Right. If so, if there was a real return of a negative 10 percent for the year, uh, and the actuary is assuming that returns will be 7 percent for the year. It's really a 17% loss uh, that will have to be paid for with future contributions. So what you'd see is a uh, fairly significant uh, decline in the funded ratio and much larger unfunded liabilities on the next measurement date, June 30th in this case. So when those unfunded liabilities grow, how does that impact budgets at the city and local level? Now, you would think that it would be a severe impact, uh, but there are some mechanics at work here that sort of mitigate the financial impact on budgets. Uh, one thing is that just the sheer process of, of calculating the contribution uh, in a year. So taking into account that loss, if you're doing the calculations June 30th of 20, it's going to take some time just to produce the amounts that need to be budgeted. And then so you're really not talking about uh, at the earliest those contribution rates being in effect until uh, July 1st, 21, perhaps even July 1st, 22. So that's just a practical mechanical impact. And then the other thing is that actuaries use smoothing techniques on asset values so that uh, the volatility of asset performance doesn't drive contribution rates very volatile year to year. So uh, now those losses are usually phased into contribution rates over some number of years, usually five years. And so you'll see, even if assets rebound uh, after this downturn, you'll see contribution rates go up year over year um, due to the phase in of the losses from, from, from this year, if if any, <laughs> right? Um, so, uh, so that will mitigate the uh, the budgetary impact over time. But you know, there'll still be rate rising contribution rates. We saw that after the Great Recession of 0809. And that's part of the part of the point of your column is that these risks are going to be with us for a while. They're going to be extended across multiple fiscal years, and uh, municipal bond investors are going to have to watch them over multiple years. What other broadly for the risk profile of how public pensions impact municipal credit? What should investors be thinking about? To the extent that uh, uh, contributions contributions are already too low in many cases, um, and when that happens, and it will probably be exacerbated by any asset losses due to the pandemic. So to the extent that contributions are too low, that means that those obligations are being put off to future years, 
which could cause budgetary pressure in the future. And BAM, at BAM, we take a long-term view of uh, the credit impact uh, uh, related to pensions. So oh, during the time we we're insuring a bond, uh, there could be budgetary pressures that are exacerbated by the, uh, the impact of, of the pandemic. Now, the other thing, now that's probably true for all issuers. There are certain issuers that uh, the funded ratios are already fairly low uh, and could even have what's called a depletion date, which means that when the actuary uh, does their projections uh, to determine the discount rate that's used for financial reporting purposes, they actually are projecting what's called a depletion date, which means that they're expecting the funds to completely drain out of the, of the pension fund at some point in the future. And when that happens, that's a pretty severe uh, financial impact because you go to a pay-as-you-go plan and uh, you could have fairly low pension contributions. All of a sudden, you could have a very large increase and a significant increase all of a sudden at some point in the future. And because of this, all of these events, that event could be the depletion date event could be either accelerated or there could be one that arises when there wasn't one before. So based on past cycles, how would you expect uh, public sector employers to re react to all of these changes? There are, uh, there are a lot of unknowns uh, related to uh, you know, plant sponsor reactions to the, the pandemic. Now, uh, what we've talked about so far is the impact of asset uh, poor performance related to budgetary requirements. There are other actions that are, there are other actions that are happening right now, such as revenue decreases, revenue losses, uh, that could have an impact on employers' decisions on what they do as far as paying their contributions. They could uh, decrease their contributions, defer them, or skip them entirely. And uh, that, of course, uh, puts more obligations onto future generations of taxpayers uh, and could cause budgetary pressures off in the future. Other things, uh, that could happen are uh, workforce adjustments, uh, which could, it, now the impact of that is going to be highly dependent on individual circumstances. So you could have salary freezes, salary cuts, you could have uh, layoffs, you could have early retirement incentives. All of these things will have an impact on the pension fund and OPEB, we shouldn't forget that, other post-employment benefits. Uh, that could raise or lower the, uh, the uh, credit risk related to pensions. Uh, just, it's just so individual, it's hard to tell. And it's gonna, this is all gonna play out over a long period of time, could be years. So a lot of moving parts, a long time to watch yeah. at it. I'm glad uh, we at BAM have you on the pension actuary side to keep an eye on it for us. Uh, thank you for joining <laughs> us today, Les. This is great uh, feedback and we'll talk to you soon. My pleasure, thank you. The market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption, like the one we're experiencing right now. BAM. Build America Mutual. Ask your broker about BAM insured municipal bonds.